Blog Talk Radio. Hello everyone. My name is Suntara and I would like to invite you to a conversation with Chrism about your Kundalini awakening experience. This is our first presentation on Blog Talk Radio and it's an honor to have everyone here in the Kundalini presence. And I'd like to offer as well a very warm welcome to those who visit us in the future through the archives. And so now, I would like to give to you today's teachings from Chrism. Hello, Chrism. Hello, Santar, and thank you for that welcome. And thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your day to listen to this broadcast. Um, so, to begin... Uh, this is Kristen, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, this is our first broadcast, and, you know, there are a lot of technical details that we've had to work out, and I'd like to thank Santara for putting in, you know, copious amounts of time in preparing uh, this broadcast to take place. I'd like to thank uh, Eileen Loro for her assistance and... Shandi Devi for her technical expertise. I'd like to thank uh, everybody on Facebook and everybody on the Yahoo group for being supportive of this new format of, uh, of communicating the, the Kundalini information. So thank you, everyone. Right now, I would like to start out uh, with an OM. I find that OM really begins to to set the energy. So I hope this transmits well. I am on a cell phone, and so we'll see how this goes. talk about kundalini. For those of you who may not uh, understand where I'm coming from with regards to kundalini, I would like to give somewhat of an explanation of that right now. Kundalini is a dormant force at the base of the spine within the last three vertebrae of the spine. It's extremely powerful. This is not a subtle uh, energetic force that... Uh, you know, if you rub your hands together, then you bring them to almost touching, and then you back off a little bit, you'll feel that magnetic pull. This isn't like that. This is very, very strong. And and even though it can start off in little subtle movements, by the time it really gets going in the body, it's it's it is the force majeure. It is it is the major force within the body, and it is really the controlling factor in how we we live our lives as spirit in a biological form. A kundalini, a kundalini causes conception to even begin, you know, so that the cells will divide along a certain path, a certain blueprint. And this blueprint, of course, has, has a lot to do with the karma of the individual as well. Uh, kundalini controls, uh, you know, you know, people going into their teenage years and all the changes that happen with adolescence. Uh, it uh, causes us to have the procreative urge. It causes us to have all of the different biological and and survival-based uh, urges that we experience, you know, as, as spirits in a body. So Kundalini is actually with us all the time but not in the awakened state. In, in the unawakened state, it has automatic systems that it provides the body for the body's survival on this world. Kundalini is often seen uh, uh, as expressing in two different areas, uh, and these areas are often seen as genders. Uh, the uh, sacred feminine and the sacred male. The sacred feminine in the Sanskrit uh, term is, is called Shakti. 
and the sacred male would be called Shiva. We don't, you know, it, it's present throughout all religions. All religions end at Kundalini. They just have a different word for Kundalini. The, you know, Greater Khan and Lee in China, Tumo in Tibet, and, and many, many, Red Serpent Energy in the uh, Amazon Basin. So every culture has its own understanding and and name for the kundalini. So as the activation begins, it's typically the sacred feminine that will start at the base of the spine or the bottoms of the feet. Sometimes, though, it can be the sacred male who starts people off at the top of the head or the the uh, the fontanelle area. Some of the first areas of the body to experience the kundalini will be the energetic anatomy, and with that I'm I am uh, referring to the chakras. Um, there are many 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 chakras in the human body, major chakras, minor chakras. The chakras. Uh, that correspond to my experience with the kundalini are the seven chakras of the spine, um, uh, starting at the uh, the base of the spine and then going to the top. These areas will feel the kundalini first, and you know they'll you'll feel it in the chakra areas as expressions of those chakras that may not have been so strong before, all of a sudden start becoming stronger. Uh, so, so Kundalini is this this force dormant in over ninety percent of the people. Lately, however, I'll have to say that the knowledge of Kundalini uh, through Kundalini Yoga, uh, through through various websites, uh, you know, Kundalini is is starting to to filter into the society in in a much uh, in a more inclusive way. Uh, it is not uh, it's not what I have seen and experienced so close to what Reiki is, although the man who developed Reiki did have Kundalini, but you know the idea of the filtration down through purchased mas- masterships, yeah, yeah, not so much, not so much. But Kundalini is in everyone. And it uh, it is available for everyone to begin to learn from. It is the dominant force, and it is its own consciousness. Please understand that it is its own consciousness, and it has its own agenda for you. Now, in order to to come into the Kundalini, uh, many people have had a directive. Uh, to come into the body that they have right now and and live a, a a life that is that is extreme in its karmic balancing so what I mean by that is they'll be presented with many many challenges as a child many challenges as as a as a as a young person uh, it, it can range everything from from an abusive uh, uh, parents or parent uh, parent uh, abuse in the many many different ways that that abuse is is given in this society uh, challenges to you know economic challenges to you know within the scholastic social structures uh, challenges all over the place until they get to a point where ah okay okay this this level of karma has been balanced. And so now the kundalini begins to open up slowly. Now this is this is perceived most of the time as a sudden opening. But it isn't. A lot of karma had to be balanced before this could occur. And so, you know, with that in mind, I want you to understand that those of you that have had that are having kundalini right now and have had a difficult time, it's not because you did anything wrong in this life. It's not because uh, uh, you know you're a victim, or you know your ego is is so you know absolutely you know in charge or anything like that. It, a lot of it has to do with with karma, and 
within the context of, of balancing the karma in the Kundalini equation, let's just say that evolution can be sudden. Okay. And the Kundalini will speed up that evolutionary process, uh, you know, for a person, you know, wanting or, or having the Kundalini experience without, without any kind of a preconceived notion. Uh, as we come under the veil of forgetfulness, we really don't get to have the information clearly. Uh, what the divine blueprint has in store for us. And when I say divine, I mean it in a real sense. I mean it in the sense of the kundalini consciousness. Kundalini is a tremendous step up in the human evolutionary experience. Extreme step up. If you look at uh, St. Francis of Assisi or St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, St. Philip of Neri, Within the Catholic context, the Catholic Christian context, uh, these people all had Kundalini and all the attendant skills of a Kundalini awakened person, uh, telepathy, uh, telekinesis, clairaudience, clairvoyance, um, healing, uh, many levels of, of bilocation, things of that nature. These are just natural, new, uh, organs of expression uh, levels of expression, maybe is more correct, uh, of, a, of a kundalini awakened person, but they can really only be used for the benevolent, loving service for another person. I.e., we're not given these skills in order to go on the Jay Leno show and show everybody, ah, watch me levitate this orange. Doesn't happen that way. You, know, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. You have to remember that the kundalini has its own consciousness. So as we go through the difficult childhood and the difficult younger life and we come into the karmic balancing, kundalini will start to express. And often part of the expression will be uh, some of the skill set coming in uh, to the person, such as, say, seeing entities or seeing spiritual consciousness, uh, a ghost, uh, other types of spiritual creation, energetic creation, and you know, in many aspects, this is this is done so that the person can can first of all see what other people are not seeing, and second, work through the levels of fear which inevitably come uh, through this type of an experience. Uh, Really, the last thing that you want your spiritual foundation based upon is fear. And so the Kundalini will immediately begin to work on your levels of fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of the new areas of experience that the Kundalini is opening up for you. If you look at a, at a, at the Vasika Pisces where you have two circles that that uh, overlap each other, and in that overlapped area, that's the kundalini. One circle represents the physical natures, the other circle represents the spiritual or divine natures, and that overlap is where you, the kundalini person, experience both. Okay. So as, as this kundalini comes up, the main conduit of its... Of its uh, of the sensate feeling that you will have in the body is through the spine. Many people at the beginning of the activation will feel a pressure at the base of the spine. And this pressure uh, can be somewhat painful sometimes. You have to remember that, you know, within the last three vertebrae of the tailbone, the energy is pushing up through the tailbone, through the pelvic girdle, into into the the, uh, the spinal channels actually uh, a very very thin channel called the Chitrini channel is what is 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 you know one of the main channels within the spinal cord itself for the Kundalini. You have uh, two other spiraling pathways uh, called in Sanskrit the Ida and the Pingala, and these these are what you'll see on the doctor's caduceus. 
as uh, as the serpents uh, spiraling their way up the staff, and the, this is the I'm sorry, the caduceus is is what the, many of the uh, people in the health profession wear as their badge of service or their badge of I, I identification within their service, and it's the staff with the two snakes going around it, and then at uh, at the top of the staff, you'll see a set of wings, and and you know that's the the medical caduceus, which is really the medical symbol is actually the kundalini in its awakened state, symbolized as that badge, as that caduceus. They don't know it though. They you know they get into the to the whole Greek uh, you know they. They can't, most most of the doctors, you know, they can't know it's kundalini because, it, you know, it doesn't fit their their karmic evolution at the point that they're at right now. They have to give that service. And from that level of understanding, uh, most of them can't know it. Some of them can, though. Some of them can. And those are the, those are the docs that you want to have, let me tell you, if you're a kundalini awakened person. Anyway, so... The uh, Chitrini channel begins to get filled with the energy. Sometimes, no. Well, let me let me back up a little bit. As as the uh, the pressure at the base of the spine, it feels more like a stiffness. It's like, oh my gosh, it's hard to bend over and pick up that shoe, or you know, you'll you'll feel a kind of a thrumming nature. Sometimes uh, the stiffness will. It will be fairly consistent. Sometimes it will back off a little bit. Sometimes it will increase. But it's always there. You think something's wrong medically. That's typically where people will first go. And so you'll go to the MD's office, probably not the emergency room at this stage. And he'll say, oh, Mr. Chris, oh, yes, oh, yeah, we've done some uh, imaging of the area. And, uh, yeah, we're looking at uh, maybe you're just a little anxious these days here take this drug and i'll say oh thanks uh for your diagnosis uh doctor person there uh but no thanks on the drugs i'll try i'll try to figure this out in a different way and this is how i would recommend people go about this don't don't try the pain pill don't try you know, I would suggest from a kundalini standpoint that you stay away from selected serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRI-based medications. These are Prozac type of medications uh, for kundalini symptomology uh, because the medical pr profession doesn't uh, understand kundalini. They just try to they just try to knock out the symptoms and. And as you know, if they're able to knock out the symptoms, they make you sign a form that says healed and released. <laughs> so, I'm not quite sure. You can, I'm actually pretty sure you can't be healed of Kundalini, and you shouldn't be. But anyway, so the stiffness in the base of the spine will begin to spread, and you'll begin to have other phenomena uh, in association with the first chakra, which is the area that's being stimulated. Uh, you may have some tingling in the bottom of your feet, on the sole of your foot. Your uh, your big toe on the left side may begin to turn black. Don't worry about it. Nothing's wrong with your toe. Everything is actually, things are more right with your toe than would be wrong with your toe. And as that occurs, and this isn't this isn't for everyone. Not everybody's left big toe turns black, but you know many many people will have that occur. Uh, you can be, you can rest assured. If you do any kind of a research uh, in the in the uh, Sanskrit sacred journals, or even on the web these days, uh, certainly on my site, you'll read more about the left big toe turning black, and, and that it is a sign of the Kundalini. Uh, Santara, yes, if you could come back. Hey, uh, am I coming through okay? I don't. You know, I don't have speakers here that give me any feedback. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be coming through fine, Prism. You're okay. Do we have a? Do we have a? Uh, um, what do they call that? Where they have a bunch of people in there talking to each other? We have. Um, we have Eileen on the line, and I have two questions for you when you're ready. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Just just wanted to make sure that that this is working. You know, thank you. 
So You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. I will, I will continue. So as the activation comes up, uh, if you read, uh, for those of you who are listening on the computer, if you go to the uh, Blog Talk uh, home site for our show here, if you read that section on transformation into the divine reality, you'll begin to see what happens uh, after the uh, the changes have begun to accelerate. And then what you read in the transformation into the divine reality, that is the the pinnacle. That is the pinnacle of the pre-spinal sweep kundalini preparation within the within the individual and this is when the the energies sweep up the spine sweep up the ida and pingala in an extremely rapid format causing the person to arch back and and have they'll experience so many different things at the same time lights and smells and and visions and oneness with with uh, the the divine and and by the divine I'm saying oneness with God oneness with all creation and this this is a tremendous experience this is a life changing life shattering experience and everything is different for the person after that everything is different you all of a sudden you've been connected for a for a microsecond with with everything that is in existence I mean think about that. Just look out in the night sky and and know that you were connected with all of those stars. Lift a finger, push a star. Okay, the connection is real. Every little every little pebble on the earth, every leaf in the tree, every cell, and all the animals, insects, and fish, and birds, and mammals, and everything on this world that you were at one with. You can see. I mean, if you can if you can hear my words and understand what I'm saying, it's a tremendous powerful experience and it should not happen should not last for longer than a very very brief time because you would not survive it happening continuously it should just be a flash in there and then a residual feeling of knowledge and oneness and unity and understanding but not the you don't want to have the extended top pinnacle point because there you know that'll just kind of blast you right out of the body and permanently. And you still have you have things to do. You came into this life to have a kundalini life and there are plenty of people that can benefit from the grace that is flowing through you. Now this is for the people that come into kundalini with the evolutionary blueprint intact, i.e. they came into the body uh, with the patterns of probability directed towards having a kundalini awakened life. Okay, now for those of you who are searching for kundalini, who are being who feel they're being called by the kundalini, this is also a very very uh, real uh, experience. It's, and I want to validate you in your search. Now, some of the issues that that come up for you is is uh, once again, there's some karmic balancing that need to be done by you. Okay, uh, for those of you who are searching for this, you're buying books, you're you're scanning the, the the internet, you're looking at all these different teachers, and you're thinking, well, God, do I really need to 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 become a you know the student of the shaman in the Siberia, or do I need to become a Hindu, or you know, do I need to 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 drink ayahuasca, or do I need to, you know, what do I, <laughs> with all the with all the opportunities out there for uh, energetic exploration, you know, it's sometimes difficult to tell which way is the best way. And I'm going to suggest I'll add my little thing here into the plethora of uh, options. I'm going to suggest that just going with what is natural in your body at the base of the spine, that is the way to go. That is what you should follow. You follow the kundalini within you. And you follow what it gives you an urge to experience. It can it can direct you in many different ways uh, in regards to your search, in regards to your karmic balancing. 
So say it'll it'll give you a tyrannical boss. I don't know if that is a is a real word tyrannical. <laughs> somebody who's a somebody who's a tyrant. Okay? And you know, they're just giving you a heart. I had plenty of these, by the way. I know about these folks too. God bless them. And uh these people are uh are there to to really make your life difficult. So in a Kundalini per, uh perspective though, these people are forcing you into levels of forgiveness, forcing you into levels of tolerance, forcing you into levels and Hello? Hello. Oh I see. Somebody's calling me. <laughs> I didn't think oh. that would happen. That's all right. That's all right. You're okay on the radio, Prism. <laughs> all right, all right. You're not hearing a beep beep, are you? No, I'm not hearing. Oh, good, good, good. Can I just can I just take a moment, Prism, to tell people yeah. about the call-in number? So, if you've just Please tuned do. in, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to Kundalini Conversations with Prism. And if you'd like to phone in and speak with him, ask a question or comment, the number is. Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So, you say, say um, that again, yeah. you say okay, that so the number is three four seven. Now that's in a bracket, and then nine three four zero zero two six. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so once again, that number was three. Uh, Say it again, Amelia. Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, uh let's see. Before that call interrupted me, uh yeah. So there was with these petty tyrants, they will force you into levels of 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 practice. That, I, that are included in the safety protocols for Kundalini activation, and these these tyrants, these people that make your life really hard, uh, they 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 serve a a tremendously positive pur- purpose in a person uh, who is searching or going into the Kundalini. In real time, you get to experience uh, a form of active forgiveness. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're any less irritating, <laughs> but it can it can mean that actually. As you forgive that person, they become less irritating. As you as you tolerate that person, uh, you know it it builds a strength within you. Um, so forgiveness and tolerance and patience, knowing that wow okay uh, this person's a real challenge to me, but but I have these positive things happening. And then your kundalini will counsel you through in through giving you the impulse whether to stay or to go. Uh just because you're on, on the road and seeking kundalini doesn't mean you have to put yourself in the path of people that will like to flatten their employees like a truck. You don't need to do that. Okay. And you also don't need to take them so seriously that they they diminish you in any way. And you shouldn't allow people to diminish you. You are a standalone uh, creation of the divine. All of us are. You're just coming into the conscious awareness of it. And so no boss, no parent, no spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, <coughs> child can... Uh, can diminish you, and so don't. I would really counsel you not to allow that to occur. Anyway, so so as you as you who are searching for Kundalini go through these these areas of exploration, uh, go with the Kundalini within you. Go with the book that falls off the bookshelf because it didn't fall off accidentally. It may not mean exactly what it's what the cover of the book. Suggests, but later on in your Kundalini awakening, you'll understand why that book fell out. Go with that. Go with the teacher. 
somehow you'll find yourself landed on a website and then, oh my gosh, that's the one. That that information there, that information is the, is what I need to do right now. And go with that. Uh, you know, I, I, I will say be advised if they're asking for copious amounts of money. Uh, you don't need to impoverish yourself in order to to do this work. Um, a donation situation is much better than say a uh, you know you know sell me your house type of scenario. You know, or if the first if the first question they ask you is is what do you do for a living? Well, then you can kind of get a heads up <laughs> that you're gonna tell them you're a janitor. No, just, kidding, just kidding. I've been a janitor. And janitors are, are kings and queens of the making. So, so as you search, listen to your feelings, listen to your intuition, and land on that source of information that you feel at that time is serving you best. Uh, with, if, it's, if it's with the information I give, then go completely into the information I give. Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. Go there and read the articles. Read them. Sub-vocalize them. Read them slow. Don't skim them. And then if you want to, if, if you want to, uh, to look at the videos, there are about 200 videos on YouTube. If you go to Chrism and the number, uh, zeros with a slash through it and then Kundalini, uh, that will give you 200 uh, videos on Kundalini. I wrote it that way because it looked like Christmas O Kundalini. <laughs> so, that's the explanation for that uh, that title. Go in there and you can you can. I mean, I, there's a lot of videos there to to watch, but they're not very long. They average around five or six minutes, if that. Go there and you can check those out as well. Uh, I am also in a Yahoo group of the same name, Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, at Yahoo Groups, uh, dot com, and then on Facebook at Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, uh, on Facebook, and then also Kundalini Apostrophe, and that's also on, on Facebook. I have actually uh, uh, four, I think four or five groups on Facebook. Um, I would like to thank, uh, uh, speaking of Facebook, I would like people to know about Spiritual Lounge on Facebook. It's a Facebook group run by Dara Kothari and, and Kothari. And uh, Dara would like to thank you for uh, the many articles that you have posted in your e-zine and on your magazine as well. So, so uh, kudos to you. As we continue searching for the kundalini, um, you will find the kundalini in your spine responding more and more and more to certain information. So really, really allow yourself to step out of, say, a current teaching model into a new teaching model. You will get to the point where you will find a teacher or a, a, a level of information that is working for you that allows you to grasp uh, with with strong clarity, uh, a system of information that feeds your kundalini directly. Uh, this is what I try to do. This is really what I am even doing on the web, on the web and seminars and conferences uh, that I've been blessed to attend. Uh, so, so there's that. Now, as as the person, now, I, I want to back up a little bit here for the person who is seeking. I would strongly recommend that you do not use entheogens or drugs to reach these areas without practicing strongly the Kundalini safety protocols. Do not do uh, psilocybin or you know any any of the the various recreational drugs from marijuana to to uh heroin or any of those things in search of the kundalini most of that will be from the ego especially with with those uh recreational drugs that are that are that have a, a feel good basis to them 
that is what the ego is going after and the any anything of a spiritual value is secondary to that and that will often not have the most positive results not saying that'll have uh hurtful results for everyone certainly not saying that but for many people they can have the the top of their crown blown off and without any any recourse from the medical field or from their family or their friends, the Internet, and they go straight into Kundalini Syndrome, and, and it lasts for a long time, and it is very, very difficult. Kundalini Syndrome is is where a, a person's ego has not been through a level of refinement enough to be able to withstand the sheer force of this powerful energy that's coming through, and it it can literally drive a person crazy with fear, crazy with uh, with the many different uh, expressions that come through them, and also lay them wide open to a, a uh, an entity attack, a, a discarnate entity attack. Discarnate means without flesh. Uh, these are these are spiritual entities that feed off the energies of human beings, typically. In this context, I'm talking about those that feed off of fear and domination, and the, the the domination of a of a person locked in a five sense world uh, without memory of being outside of that world. I mean, you know, it's it's a very very precarious and hurtful situation. And so, please do not use drugs from alcohol to to aspirin to to uh, marijuana or psilocybin or ayahuasca or harmaline, uh, pegadent harmaline, or any of the many, many, many individual aspects of soma uh, that that are are uh, available online and, and in, in the countries that you're in to this day. Please work from your body and your mind, and your emotions, and your psychology, and your spirituality. Those five expressions of the human being, this is where you want to work from. Yes, it's hard, and and it does certainly does not have a, you know, the, the feel-good high or buzz that you would get with, with uh, alcohol or any of the other uh, recreational things that, that, that I have mentioned. And don't get me wrong, I've tried all these things. I've tried all these, not all of them, but I've tried, you know, my fair share of them. <laughs> I can hear you laughing. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Uh, I've certainly done my fair share. Um, but the Kundalini in me said, no, 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 don't do that. Don't don't do that and think that you will awaken me or that that I will come to you in a stronger format. So yeah, uh, stay away from as much of that as you can. And if you really want to know, and this is this is for both sets now. This is for people that have already activated or awakened their Kundalini, and this is for people that are looking to activate their Kundalini. The fastest and most rapid way. Well, there are a few. Uh, the first one that I will suggest is absolute devotion. If you look, uh, if you go to Santara's Facebook page, uh, you'll see something, uh, a video that she put together, actually her Kundalini put together, called Kundalini Devotion. And this this exemplifies, I, I feel, at least in my opinion, uh, a great primer in uh, in in d- the discussion of the deep reverence and devotion that the kundalini is calling people to come into this is this is even faster than tantra okay the devotion going into the devotion in a kundalini context will bring the kundalini out from within you into the expressive activated awakened state but it must be sincere. And you have to remember, Kundalini is inside you, and it knows when you're being sincere. It reminds me of that Santa Claus thing since we're in the Christmas season right now. 
Uh, he knows when you've been good or bad. Like, he'll be good for goodness. He'll be good for goodness' sake. <laughs> <laughs> Kundalini, Kundalini is, you know, Santa prays to Kundalini. Let's put it that way. Okay, Kundalini knows you. It knows when you're being sincere, and it knows when you're not. Okay, so even though your ego will say, "Well, geez." You know, I've been sincere for three weeks now, and I don't feel anything at the base of my spine. <laughs> I'm going to say to you, keep doing it without having the expectation. Do it as a practice, as a as a love of Kundalini, a love of that divine force within you. Don't let there be a time period that comes to an end and say, well, geez, I've been doing it for this amount of time, and, and I expect expect to have results. Watch out for that that expectation. I'm going to speak on the expectations here a little bit a little bit later. So devotion really is the strongest format. And you'll look at, you know, uh you have different ways of of giving devotion to the kundalini within you. If the kundalini has has led you to a certain rock on a mountain and you look at that rock and you go, well, why the heck am I staring at this rock? Wow, what's going on with that? This actually happened to me. So I'm walking along the Sacramento River in in Northern California and I'm just like not really focusing on anything. I'm just walking along and I see this rock and I just start staring at this rock and I I don't know why I'm staring at the rock. I just stare. I'm staring at the rock, and so I find I reach down, and I pick up the rock, and I and I examine the rock, and all of a sudden I see a picture on the rock. I see a picture of a guy in robes with a beard, and I see his hairline, I see his eyes, I see his nose, his mouth in profile, and I see his hand outstretched as if he's giving something to someone. And I'm I'm stunned. I'm I'm shocked. I was like, my God, this is so clear. Uh, I still have this rock. <laughs> Jeez Louise. You know, and uh, and I and I look at the rock and I and I said, this is a definite message for me to give and to receive and to give what it is I receive. And I had no idea of kundalini at the time. I didn't, I didn't even know the word. I just knew that there was something going on that I wasn't quite understanding of. And, and, and you know, in the, and then it happened again. And another day in the same area, walking along the, the Sacramento River in Northern California, I'm just kind of walking along, and all of a sudden my eyes are drawn to this rock. Once again, I'm just kind of going, why am I staring at this rock? And the, I had this huge, compelling feeling that I needed. This is a big rock, right? This is like maybe a 15, 20-pound rock. And I'm going to myself, I'm thinking, well, this is weird. What's, what's going on? So I get this urge to pick it up and turn it over. I pick up the stone, and I turn it over, and there is bright yellow paint on the underside of this stone and it's it's I immediately see that it's a figure that is kneeling and and in in a in a devotional aspect praying to what looks like a sun. It looks like a sun that is that is up and over its head slightly. And I go, Whoa you know, and I see this very clearly and I once again, you know, I picked that rock up and I studied it and I took pictures of it and I drew it and, you know, things of this nature. If this happens to you, follow it. This is not accidental. Just like the book falling off the off the shelf in the bookstore or the library. This is not accidental. Follow these things. These these are definite guidances, uh, pre Kundalini guidances that will help you along your path. But devotion. Devotion is the theme that connects both of these rocks and me. Okay, I had to become very, very devotional to what the Kundalini was to me at the time. And like I said, I didn't know what it was. 
but I just knew that there was something, you know, I, I had to, to get devotional in some way. And, and of course, you know, I found various ways to do that. I will suggest for you who are searching and for you that already have it, that you become very, very, very devotional. Now, some of you are in Kundalini Yoga. Some, some of you are in, in various uh, uh, Kundalini, not Kundalini, but yogic-oriented practices. Some of you uh, give devotion to a teacher, uh, a dead teacher, or a living teacher, and I want to encourage that. I, I don't think Kundalini really cares. Uh, well, it does. It does. Uh, it will direct you to the appropriate teacher to give your devotion to. Uh, people have used me as a devotional target, and I say it that way because when people give devotion to me, I, I, I know, I already know, know that it's not about me. And the Kundalini in me is, is blatantly said so. Uh, you know, there is a custom uh, where people want to touch the feet of the teacher. And You know, I'm born in, in the West and in, in the United States, and, and you know, this is not something I was used to. And it, it actually was kind of difficult for me to stay focused as people are touching your foot. My feet are so much sensitive. <laughs> anyway, so I, I spoke to my Kundalini, and you have this—you could have this conversation with your Kundalini. And I said, "Is this necessary? Is this something that needs to happen? Can we skip this part?" And the Kundalini came back very strongly to me and said, "This is not about you. This is about them." and their kundalini, the divine, that I am in them. Ah! Okay, all right. So, that is a form of devotion. And it is about you and your kundalini. I don't care if you're going through a living teacher or you're going through a, a teacher that has passed. Uh, it is about your evolution into the kundalini. And devotion is so very important. Give yourself to the Kundalini completely. Give control of your life to the Kundalini. Give control of your body to the Kundalini. Give control of your mind and your psychology and your emotions and your spirit to the Kundalini. All five human expressions you give to the Kundalini. Or you give to that teacher that the Kundalini has told you to give it to. Knowing and trusting in that teacher. And that teacher will... will I mean, you'll be able to know. You'll be able to know how appropriate that is. And you'll get definitive results. You will get definitive results. Devotion is, is, is extremely important. It will, it will come into your dream life. And uh, you'll see the teacher, the, your flesh teacher, your living teacher in the dream life. And the kundalini will flow through that teacher in the dream life and give you very, very specific instructions. And these instructions are to be followed. So all of a sudden you become kundalini activated and awake, not only in your waking five sense existence, but in your your astral or dream time uh, multi, 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 multi uh, sensed existence. Okay. And you, you're given very specific instruction from the Kundalini vis-a-vis -vis the flesh teacher. So a flesh teacher can be a very, very, very strong advocate for you, your Kundalini, and your education within the Kundalini. And I will recommend it if you can find a person that you feel good with, that you trust. Uh, if it's a dead teacher, it can be a little bit more of a challenge. But say, we'll just use Christ, for instance. So many, many of my students have had the actual Christ come into the room where they're meditating or where they're, where they're having kundalini uh, uh, waves, and, and the Christ will stand at their bedside and just look at them, or wherever they're, they're uh, meditating, and just look at them, or, or give them advice about forgiveness, about trust, about uh, devotion, things of that nature, about the qualities of love that that specific person 
needs to hear hear about. Uh, so, you know, when I say dead teacher, I only mean a teacher without a physical body. Uh, not all, not all teachers will do this. But if if you're if you're in devotion to the teacher in a kundalini context, well, that changes the entire picture. That brings the active divine that's in your spine into play for your kundalini education and, and for the uh, the brilliance that is forming within you, the evolution that is 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 uh, Expressing itself within you. Okay. So you're changed by this. You're changed by this devotion. And so now you're different. And now everything that you see or that you feel uh, will become determined by your level of surrender and acceptance to the Kundalini grace. Okay. And as well as from your karmic. Uh, position in life so devotion is the strongest format and the quickest the the most rapid format and and in my opinion the safest certainly if you're going if you you know from my experience if you go with devotion you know using the safety protocols as a pattern of devotion to the kundalini this is the fastest and safest route into the kundalini Seriously, go to the uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems the Number One dot com and look at the left hand menu, and you'll see uh, uh, the button for uh, the safeties. That's what it's called, the safeties. And do that. Read those safeties. Print them out. I invite you to right now. I give you complete permission to print out these safety protocols. Read them. And bring them into your life. Don't sell them, though. Don't, don't uh, do what some people have done: is, is they, uh, they read the safety protocols and then they, they reverbalize them in their own words and then they sell them to people. Uh, I know this one tarot reader in India. She's doing that. She took Shakti Bhak from me a couple of times and then she, she kind of hijacks it, and uh, and uses it for her own profit. I put these up there for people to receive freely, freely. The Kundalini in me wrote these for people to receive for free. Don't copy them and then and then uh, you know recharacterize them and then sell them to other people. That's 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 not uh, that's not the intent. Copy them, print them out, use them for your own Kundalini evolution bringing that expression into your own body. This is what I invite you to do. So devotion, I will say, is, is the strongest. Tantra would be the second strongest. I have, I have worked with Tantra uh, many times with people throughout the years, um, uh, expressing the Tantra through the Tantra gaze, uh, through uh, uh, the... The, the many uh, different levels of interaction that Tantra brings. It's not all about sex, but some of it is about sex. You know, the, the, you can't get away from that with Tantra as much as we would like to in the West because, you know, we're somewhat prudish about the sexual expression, and that includes uh, Europe as well when I say the West. Uh, yeah, 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 we, we don't... <laughs> You heard that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't think she's hearing it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I have to say, everyone, I am in Northern California right now speaking to you from uh, Santa Rosa. Amelia is on the studio. She is controlling the show, and she is in the kingdom of Kerry in, in uh, southwestern Ireland. And so this... This, you know, I, you gotta love Blog Talk for setting it up this way in the internet, so that we can reach everyone here, in in such w- with such a, a long distance between the speaker and the studio. Anyway, uh, within the tantra context, uh, yeah, sex is part of it. Sex is part of it. Sex is part of the kundalini. The kundalini even gives you a sex drive. You know, and, and so. You know, within some of the tantric teachings, which 
you know, I'm going to have to, to, to because of the prudishness of, of some of the societies, you know, I can't go into real explicit teachings with this, even though this is what I would prefer to do. I, I, I don't like dancing around any of these issues based upon people's uh, 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 prudishness or fear. But that is the nature of, of the scenario here right now, so I will abide by that. Uh, anything that, that has to do with, with a sexual uh, interest or a sexual receptivity or, or anything that has to do with the sexual expression at all, first and second chakra expressions, uh, are just as important as anything that occurs at the fifth, sixth, or seventh chakras. As a matter of fact, uh, using the first and second chakra expressions of sexual nature uh, within, say, the joining aspect of the two genders is extremely conducive to kundalini uh, excitation. And this is why, of course, that people in India have been doing it for thousands of years. Even though, you know, the British invaded India and you know, and, and, and uh, you know, gave some of their uh, mental blockages to the Indian population with regards to Victorianism or Edwardian, you know, sexual preferences. Uh, still, many, many, many of the of the people in India understand. And if you look at some of the statues in in uh, Renaissance India, classical India. You can see them today, and it's all about uh, the, the sexual connection and its ability to bring a person into kundalini transcendence. This is why it is held on so long, is because it's effective. And, uh, you know, you know I, I get a lot of people telling me I went to San Francisco the other day at an Alex Gray event, and, oh, you can't have tantra and, and penetrate and... And, you know, you don't have to pen it. And it's like, oh, please, get over it. Get over yourself. Get over your fears. You know, penetration is how you actually came into existence. So just, you know, get okay with it. Um, I don't care if people penetrate or not. What I care about is the intention that is behind the energy, uh, with or without penetration, in the, uh, in the uh, tantric equation. You'll note, you'll note that everyone from Muktananda to Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, uh, uh, a.k.a. Osho. Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, his other name is Osho. Okay. And then the guy that brought uh, Kundalini Yoga to the West, I'm trying to remember his name, uh, black beard, piercing eyes. Uh, you know, he got three women pregnant, you know, while he was over here doing that. Uh, so, obviously, some of these great masters uh, do practice uh, tantric penetration uh, in, in, uh, the, you know, in, in the gender opposite of themselves in order to initiate uh, spiritual conditions conducive for kundalini awakening within those bodies. So, you know, it, you know a lot has been you know, negatively written about me with regards to these things, and that's okay. You know, I'm I'm fine with it. I I forgive them, and I for, and I'm tolerant of it simply because this is what I this is how the Kundalini causes me to be. Okay, and so within the whole tantric thing, I want you to understand that uh, uh, it is a clean and beautiful expression of exploration within for the kundalini and there is a there's a person that i would like to recommend for for tantric education and her name is shandi Devi, c-h-a-n-d-i and her last name is spelled d-e-v-i and uh, she has a book from om to orgasm which you just gotta love that title <laughs> anyway uh Shandi, uh, I, you know, I don't know if you're listening or not, but uh, I, I want to thank you for that book and for the knowledge and grace that you have brought uh, the understandings of Tantra into into the Western societies. 
and uh, and I and I wish you great great further success in that endeavor. So Shanti, once again, thank you very much. Uh, and so so we have devotion, we have tantra, and then we just we have straight meditation. Meditation is is really fundamental to the kundalini awakening process. Ah, but wait, before I get into this. What's our time looking like, Amelia? We have um, just short of 30 minutes left, Chris. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, Amelia, would, yeah? you, would, you, would you give me a little ding when, I, when I'm 10 minutes into that? 10 minutes into that? 10 minutes to go, you mean? Yeah, okay. yeah, 10 yeah. minutes from now, from now. 10 minutes from now, sure, I will. Okay. Meditation is so very important um, uh, for a lot of, of my private students. I will suggest a devotional and meditation practice in addition to the five or the the uh, the safety uh, protocols, which includes the five Tibetans. Uh, once again, you can go to the uh, YouTube and just go Krisum uh, Kundalini, and you'll you'll find all my videos. Uh, meditation is extremely important and I'm talking about a stillness meditation stillness being able to sit still now you don't have to sit in full lotus position or you know any kind of really you know exotic lotus or you know yoga oriented position you don't have to do that at all you don't have to put your hand in some wildly amazing mudra either you can just join your your, your forefinger tip and your thumb tip on both hands. That's it. Spread those other fingers out. Put them on your knees. Put them in your lap. Okay? You don't have to do anything that is that is really uh, forcing you to do other things in order to get to the point where you can meditate. Sit in a chair. When I started meditating, I didn't I didn't sit on the floor in full lotus position, you know, with incense burning around me and monks chanting in the background. I just didn't. I, I was sitting in a aluminum metal shed in a chair, a metal chair, uh, and in this shed, it was an old gardening shed, and I was surrounded on every wall by black widows, black widow spiders. And I was a little concerned about this. Yeah, you know, I opened the door and I see them all there and I say, hello, ladies. Uh, if you don't bother me, I won't bother you. <laughs> For an entire year, every day for a year, I meditated for at very least 21 minutes in that in that aluminum shed, sitting in a chair towards the edge of the chair. I didn't use the seat back so much. Uh, I had my feet flat on the ground. I had my fingers in the mudra that I just described to you, four finger tip and thumb tip on both sides with the uh, the uh, other fingers spread out on my knees. And I would I would get into a stillness mantra. The first thing I would do is is I would say I am at one with the all that I am. I am at one with the all that I am. I'd say that over and over and over and over. And then I would do an overlapping interlinking uh, mantra of the same. I would I would say it like this: I am at one with the all that 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 I am. You see the difference. That's a, that's a, a, that is a, ma- a mantra that has no ending. It just goes into infinity. And so I would use that quite a bit. And then from there, I would just stop the mantra. I would be compelled to stop the mantra and just breathe through the nose and just follow the breath, bringing the eyes up to the brow points. The point is about an inch above your where your eyebrows would be up in the middle of the forehead, or not in the middle of the forehead, but, you know, uh, up to about an inch above where your eyebrows are in the middle. And I would I would just go into that stillness. And eventually I would feel a channel of energy begin to form between the nostrils and the top of the head. And... Uh, pretty soon you're able to breathe into these channels. And so this is very, very important that a, that a, a stillness meditation occur. And don't have any expectation of, of your path, you know, being exactly the same as my path. Your path will be unique to you in 
all of the different venues that we've been discussing. It will be unique to you. You will you may not turn over rocks and see bright yellow stripes <laughs> on the other side of a rock. Don't expect that to happen. Okay, but meditation is extremely important and I want you to really engage in it. Now yes, you can meditate anywhere. When you start doing stillness meditation, you can be still on the bus. You can be still on the what do they call that in England? The underground. Uh, you can be still, you know, as, as you're, you just don't want to be still while you're driving. I don't want you to meditate stillness-wise while you're driving. You pay attention to the road. You pay attention to the other drivers on the road. They're your brothers and sisters. You pay attention to them so that, that, so that problems don't happen at 60 miles per hour. Okay? Um, do not meditate and then drive. Just putting that out there. Uh, but meditation, as you, you're sitting at home, or you're sitting in a forest, sitting on a bus, sitting in a park, uh, taking a 15-minute break at work, do your breathing, follow your breath. And if you're interested, you contact me uh, privately at uh, K, as in Kundalini, fire, as in, ouch, fire burned me, K fire 4 F-O-R, all, A-L-L, at yahoo.com. And, uh, you know, if, if you're interested in learning about Kundalini from me, then please feel free to email me privately, and, and uh, we may be able to have a discussion about this with you and for you. Uh, so meditation is the third leg of a trinity of, of uh, awakening protocols that you can follow. Now I want to talk about expectation. Expectation will get in the way of your awakening and activation. Activation, uh, Expectation is controlled by your ego. I want it now. I want it now. And I want it the way that I expect to have it. And Kundalini will just kind of look at that and give a gentle smile to her Kundalini child and go, oh, boy. Do we have a long ways to go with that one? You don't get to have it your way. The Kundalini will give it to you the way it wants you to have it. You do not get to control your enlightenment. Your enlightenment controls you. Your enlightenment controls you. The path of the Kundalini is a path that you can walk, but at the same time you walk the Kundalini, the path walks you. You do not control the Kundalini. You don't, you know, if you ever hear somebody say, oh yeah, uh, I, I told my Kundalini that I wanted to heal uh, that guy in the wheelchair and why did it work? You know, you just kind of, you got to look at that and you just kind of go, okay, all right, well, that's different from my understandings. Kundalini is the divine, and the divine controls you. You do not control the divine. So, therefore, any expectation that you have needs to be set aside. You do the practice because you are acknowledging the potential of grace within you. You're just acknowledging it. You're not acknowledging it with an agenda of having it come to you in this way or that. That's your ego trying to hijack the situation. So you do your practice as as an acknowledgement of the presence of God within you. And you keep doing it, whether or not you feel anything. Remember when I said I meditated for over a year. Every day, 21 minutes. I invite you to do that too. I invite you to do it for a month. <laughs> do it for a month. See how you feel. Meditation will change your life in very, very positive ways. I wish I had more time. Anyway. Oh, okay. Ding, Chris. I'm 10 minutes ding, in. 20, ding. Tw- okay, 20 minutes to go. Thank you. Let's open it up for questions. 
Okay. Well, I have um, a question from a lady called Sarah, but she didn't want to speak with you on the phone. She asked me to ask you. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So she said that recently she read the following statement, that it wasn't particularly difficult to raise the kundalini energy, but what was more of a challenge was to maintain the awakening in the face of daily life. And she said hers isn't awakened yet, and is it easy to wake, to raise the kundalini? And if she succeeds, she wanted to know um, how she could maintain the awakening when it happens. Okay, no, that's very good. Sarah, Sarah, thank you for asking your question. Uh, yeah, uh, many, many, many of the the masters or the people that call not masters, um, the the people that have um, that have been known to be holy men or holy women, you know, many of them will say, "Oh, it's easy to awaken the kundalini." Oh my gosh, that's the simple part. It's living with it. That's the hard part. And they're absolutely correct. If you if you look at the comparative between the two states, it is not so easy to awaken the kundalini. Once again, as I mentioned earlier in the conversation, a lot of karma has got to be balanced for you to do that. A lot of karma, a lot, a lot of, and it doesn't have to be difficult karma either. It can also be good karma too, but it has to be addressed. And so within that context, well, what is that person's karma? Okay, so what if that person has a very, very, very difficult karma? Well, how easy is it then? Okay, these you can't make these generalized statements about everyone, saying, oh, it's easy to awaken in everyone. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's not so easy if your karma dictates to you that, oh, well, okay, it'll be easy after you're molested as a child. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe I'll skip that. Um, no, it's not so easy. Uh, but now when I look at Sarah, and yes, I can see Sarah. When I look at Sarah and I see her through the visage of her question of the intention of the energy, uh, there are many people who have that same question. And for Sarah, yeah, she can awaken her kundalini. And the format that she that I will suggest she uses first are the safeties. I will always go to the safety protocols. Sarah, you, if you could, uh, go to Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com. Go to the, the the left hand menu and select the safeties. Print those out. Read them three times separately. Amelia, are you breathing in your mic? Oh, I'm breathing. Is it? Is it? Are you hearing it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, keep breathing. Just not on the mic. Sarah, go to those safety protocols and begin to practice them, especially the behaviorals, the the forgiveness, the tolerance, the patience, the trust, the the integrity. Uh, practice those in a real time expression as much of the time as you can. And if you find yourself making a mistake here and there, that's fine. Forgive yourself, make the correction, and then go forward in the practice. As you're doing that, do the five Tibetans. And uh, go to the first and second, or go to the videos that I placed on YouTube. Uh, there'll be some of the first ones, so you'll have to, like, scroll through all the way to the end. Uh, I think I posted the first one in 2007 or 8, something like that. Uh, and it's it's... I give you a, a meditation and a, and a practice based on what you do right after you finish the five Tibetans. And then, of course, I show you a, a couple of videos show you how to do the five Tibetans. Okay. Uh, that is a, that is an awakening that will happen for you. That, uh, I, the safeties themselves are a standalone activation, uh, equation for the Kundalini. So I hope that works for you, Sarah. And if you're interested, uh, feel free to email me uh, with any other questions you may have, or you can email Centara or, you know, 
on Facebook or, or in private emails. My email, once again, is kfireforall at yahoo.com. Uh, so thank you for asking the question. And, yes, it can be easy if you do the work. But, you know, whether the work is easy for you is, is individual to you. Uh, living with the Kundalini is a different story. Living with the Kundalini whew, is is amazing. That's that's the beautiful part of the journey. Living in grace. Living in grace. The the divine flesh and the flesh that is divine. Um, I will I will be coming back and I, I will talk more on that uh, in other in uh, other future uh, communications. Is there another question, Amelia? Yes, there is, Chris, and we have another show actually next Wednesday, just to let people know at the same time on the 19th of the month. There's another question. Um, it's live. Okay, you're through to Chris now. There's another question. Okay. Okay, off you go. Hi, Chris. Prism, um, this is can Eileen. You turn, can you turn off your your um yes, yes. Yeah, thank computer? You. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Okay. Hi, Chrism. I have a question for you, and you may have already answered this somewhat. Um, if one is activated in this lifetime, will he or she become realized in this lifetime? Uh, activation is definitely a, a step towards. Uh, enlightenment and realization absolutely without a doubt uh depending on how they surrender into that into that kundalini expression within them will determine the level of realization that they'll that they'll experience surrender is is the key ingredient to that okay thank you very much you're very welcome thank you for asking eileen mm -hmm. Amelia, anybody okay, else prison. Yeah, there was a question about today's date. Um, Mark rang in, uh, but he had to go away again. So um, the question was about today's date. He said, you know, what makes today's date more significant than, say, the 11th of the 11th 11th, or the 9th of the 9th 99, or the 7th of the 7th 77? Would you have, or do you have anything um, to say about the 12th of the 12th, or um, the 21st well, you know, of the 7th? It's, it's, it's funny, it's funny, I mean... People always forget to take a, to take in consideration the two zero in front of the one two. Yes, twenty twelve. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So in actuality, it is uh, December twelfth, uh, two thousand and twelve. So if you look at this numerologically, uh, uh, it doesn't it doesn't add up. Uh, quite the same way. If you were looking at it just 12, 12, 12, well, then you say, well, okay, there's a there's a trinity of trinities there. And then, of course, this Kundalini speaks the language of trinities. And so you could say, da 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 But that's not the case. We have 12, and then we have 2, 0, and then we have 12. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's so that equals 8. Of course. That, that equals 8, which is infinity. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, a lot of people forget to put in the two zero in front of the one two when they're discussing things that have to do with eleven 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 or twelve twelve twelve. Uh I would find that to be more of a of a of a uh a scattered interpretation rather than a focused one uh with regards to today's date. Um okay. I, you know, I, I, Okay. Okay. And he wanted to know as well, um, Chrism, does the Earth have its own Kundalini energy? Well, because we are of the Earth, and uh, the you know our bodies are representations of the Earth, and I would have to say absolutely, uh, it has its consciousness, it has its Kundalini, that in no way do people have any control over, or even a real understanding of. It would be more of a vice versa. It has more of an understanding of us than we have of it. And uh, if you wanted to look at it from a Kundalini equation, the Shakti, the sacred feminine, is the earth. The sacred male is the sun. 
which is why I recommend people have a bottom to top activation. The sacred mother begins the ascent of the kundalini at the base of the spine and the bottom of the feet. The sacred father uh, pulls that energy from the top of the head towards itself, towards the top of the head, and that is when the sacred marriage occurs at the top of the head. And getting back to a little bit of what Sarah said, you don't get to turn the kundalini off. Once it's up, it's up. It's just how you live with it that makes the difference. Uh, the earth is the Shakti Kundalini, so yes, absolutely. But do you understand the sacred divine? Can you plot and 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 control and and under? <laughs> okay, I apologize, Chris. You're back online. Oh, was I off the whole I, time? I think you were for no, no, just for two seconds. Apologies. Perhaps not, but I think maybe you were. Um, okay, yeah, sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know where to pick it up, but the earth does have a Kundalini. It is Shakti, and, and the earth is the divine feminine. And so, therefore, yeah. Yeah, but do you understand it? No. No, no. Any more than you understand the idea of divinity uh, from a five-sense understanding. I mean, it's difficult. Uh, when you, you know, when you ascend or when you die, you'll have a better understanding of the divine attributes of of creation than you do right now. Hello. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. I. Okay. I just disconnected somebody that was uh, phoning through there, so apologies to that person. If they'd like to phone back, there may be time to put them through to you. So apologies. So we have no calls at the moment, Chris. Well, call back. Whoever was calling, call back. Whoever was calling, call back, yes, please. Well, we're having technical difficulties. I mean, <laughs> I just pressed something on my cell phone that I thought disconnected me. So, you know. <laughs> okay, well, we're not, doing too badly. we're not doing too badly for our first time out, I feel. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's okay, right. Um, if you can talk there for a minute, Chris, and please, I'll be back again. Thank you. Ah, okay, all right. So, I want you to have confidence in Kundalini. I want you to have confidence in yourself. I want you to realize that your enlightenment is at the base of your spine. For those of you who are sitting right now, you're sitting on your enlightenment. You have the capability to go so amazingly far. Uh, this is, you know, a lot of ET, a lot of aliens, you know, they look for people because people have the ability to go from zero to enlightenment in a lifetime. And I want you to understand how special, how beautiful, how loving and loved you are within this process. Uh, yes, yes, there are some very challenging areas within this process. And yes, 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 I will say that it is good to have a flesh teacher. I will recommend it. But it is not the only way to go. And I think that uh, for those of you who are listening now and for those of you who are listening in the future, you will feel you will feel the authenticity and the, the integrity of the information that has been given in this first conversation. May I interrupt, may I interrupt Chris? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've go got, um, okay, Rosemary is going to speak with you now. Go ahead, Rosemary. Hi, hello. Chris. Hi, Rosemary. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just delighted uh, for this opportunity, but I want to thank you. Thank you for all that it took to get this together. It's not easy. And also, but even more importantly, I thank you for your devotion, that it's not only what you say, but it's also that you live this way. And that's always inspiring and touching. And I want to thank you and uh, very touched always to be part of this community, and well, and it and is just um, very touching and inspiring for me. So thank you. Well, thank you, Rosemary, for for that kindness expressed, and and uh, you know it takes people 
people like you and and and, and Centara and Eileen and and all the many people that are in this community to to bring this to the level where we can we can have these conversations. And so thank you, Rosemary, mm-hmm. for that. Thank you. You are most welcome. Thank you for all that I receive and others I know too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and, you, Rosemary. Uh, yeah. How much time do I have? Uh, okay, you're down to four minutes, minutes now. Yeah, five minutes. This is shy of that. Okay, uh, so uh, as Amelia mentioned, we'll be having a uh, a show on the 19th, and uh, uh, just as a, I would like you all to get a little extra water and some extra food. I'm not saying that on the 21st, you know, the world is coming to an end, even though I enjoy that that concept. <laughs> but <laughs> but I do I do understand that fear can have many 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 um, uh, ramifications of itself into society, and you know if if fear is allowed to take hold, then uh, the effects of fear can be disruptive to how you've been living your life up to this point. And I would like you to stay nourished, and I would like you to stay hydrated. So please put some extra water uh, away, you know, at least a week's worth of water and, a, and maybe a month's worth of food. Uh, if, if you can, please do this because it's important for Kundalini people, all people, but, but it, for, in the context of our conversation, Kundalini people need to survive. You are the vanguard of the enlightened human being. And thank you for for listening to the show. Once again, if you go to Kundalini Awakening System, the number one dot com, uh, read that website. I would like to thank Glenn Ola for putting that website together. He is a webmaster, web designer, extraordinaire. And uh uh, I would like you to to enjoy his website, and if you feel like donating to him in order to keep the website up, then, then I'm sure that would be appreciated. Uh, I do also accept donations myself as well, so if you wish to, to support our program, that's fine. We are now a public charity. Kundalini Awakening Systems is a public charity, and uh, we serve those in the Kundalini and coming in to the Kundalini doesn't have to be bipolar or or any of the other mental diseases that the medical profession likes to to turn it into. I would like to thank uh Eileen and and especially Centara for learning how to drive Blog Talk Radio. How cool. And so thank you very much Centara for your efforts here. I would like to to invite you to visit uh Kundalini Awakening apostrophe uh, on it's a public Kundalini group on Facebook and uh, my my page on Facebook as well. Uh, it, uh, feel free to join or feel free to 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 comment. Um, and for those of you in the future, thank you for coming and listening. Um, uh, feel free to come back on the nineteenth. Uh, with some questions, if you like, I'll try not to to uh, to to talk so much. Uh, you know, in a <laughs> well, it's good. It's, it's always good to hear you and listen to you, Chris. And but I'd encourage people as well to phone in with questions, maybe from today's program or next week's, and um, it would be great to get questions. Yeah, and and we can talk about the ship, the uh, the twelve twenty one two thousand. Twelve, and let's not forget to put the two zero in front okay. of our of our numbers. Okay, Chris, and we have one minute to go, so we're winding up now. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Santara uh, and Ireland, for for allowing this to occur. Thank you for everyone who called in with a question, and I look forward to talking with you in another Kundalini conversation on the nineteenth of December. 2012. Goodbye.